Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting of the year and obviously happy new year. Um, for this for this specific event, I would like to take some time to step back and see the different stats uh, from last year. So let me share my screen with you. Um, share screen. Where is that? That's... Can you see my screen? So basically, yep, perfect, sounds good. So, um, so what I wanted to to remind to remind us and what to look at um, we did over the last year is to keep in mind that the Jenkins Infra project is an open infra project where everybody is invited to participate, um, to contribute, to learn. Um, and so I wanted to look at what are the things that we did that improve that over the last few years. So the first thing that we did was um, the way we organize this meeting. So we started doing the Jenkins Ephra meeting four years ago. Um, initially, that was a way for to synchronize with Tyler and I. Two years ago, we started taking notes of the meeting so other people could follow uh, what we were doing on the Jenkins Infra project. I had a look this morning and we wrote 65 pages um, of notes, which is quite impressive. And a year ago, we did another milestone, which was to record this meeting so other people could follow what we were doing here, um, which is, um, I, was, I mean, I was really happy and I wasn't expecting that when I started working on, on these projects. Another thing that I look at was what are the stats that kids can tell us. So everything is public. Most of our code is on the Git, on the Jenkins Info organization. So in this case, I look at how many people. So we had more than 200 contributors to the Jenkins project. Um, those people contributed to 31 repositories, um, which is quite a lot. And also um, we start to see a drift from the people in the different time zones. So while people initially start contributed to the Jenkins Infra project from the United States, when you see under the, the graph that I have here, we start to see more people um, on the European time zone, which kind of makes sense with Tim, Tim Jacob, Alec and I. Um, so yeah, that was, um, I was really happy to see that because it accelerates the feedback loop. And when we look at the top kit repositories, we can also, I don't know if you can see the, 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 the information. I know, I know it's kind of, it's quite small. Um, I'm not sure if it's readable for you, um, but what we can see is we had quite a lot of different kind of um, repositories. We have Puppet Code, Kubernetes. We have the main website and depending on the kit repo, um, we had more or less um, contributors. Another thing that I wanted to share with you is the way we, we, we finance the Jenkins Infra project and how big that infrastructure is. So we don't receive money. So everything is running based on sponsoring. Um, we have many different kinds of sponsors. Some provide monthly budgets that is renewed every month. Other provide a big amount of money, let's say for a year. And some sponsor just says, um, you can use uh, whatever you want on our platform and just it's, it's free for you. Um, at least what I was able to monetize is we spent more than $200,000 on the infrastructure over the last year. Um, obviously, it, I mean, it's more because stuff like, for instance, Datadog is free, so we have no visibility on how much we would have to pay for, let's say, Datadog, Chief Frog, or IBM. So it just, I mean, it just gives us um, a big overview of the different things. Another information that I look after, that I look today, was what are different stats that we can um, find for at least the two main websites. Um, another major website that I, that I did not consider is here is the update center because I don't, I mean, we, we use Google Analytics and we use Google Search Console on the main website and plugins, but we don't really have um, 
easy ways to collect uh, stats on the update center. So I voluntarily avoided uh, to spend too much time here. So the first one is the main website. When we look at the Google Analytics information that we have here, we can see that the number of people, um, the number of visitors over the last year was more than 6 million of user visitors, um, which increased by almost 30% compared to the year before. And when we look at where those people are coming from, um, we, I mean, it's not a major surprise here. Um, North of America, Western Europe, Eastern Asia, those are kind of the, the continent where most of the visitors are coming. What surprised me in this stats, in this information, is that the number of visitors from the north of America decreased. Um, yeah, decreased by 3%, while visitors from the other places increased. So for instance, from Europe, it's more than 4% of visitors on the main website. Um, I also look at um, the Fastly. Fastly is the CDN use on our infrastructure. Um, we started, so they started sponsoring us um, in March last year. Um, and so the kind of information that we have there is in terms of network um, bandwidth, what we are using there. And what is interesting here is it's an average by, by day. So since June, we had by an average one to three million of requests done on the main website per day. And we had a more 30 gigabyte of transfer, the network transfer per day on um, related to the main website, which is quite impressive for a project. Sorry, yeah. So Olivier, that data transfer is from just www.jenkins.io. So what I think of as a documentation site is is still transferring gigabytes in a year. Wow. Yep. So th this one is each time someone try to go to www.jenkins.io. Thank um, you. Okay, that's that's much bigger than I expected. Wow. When we look at the Google console, um, we also have information like the number of clicks there. But the one that interests me is the pages. Uh, what are the top pages that people want to look? Um, and specifically here, we can see that it's a documentation for the pipeline syntax, the, the, the second one. Um, we also have pipeline Docker, pipeline Jenkins file. What you can see here um, that you have to keep in mind is we started, I think, in September, we starting to use www.jenkins.io by default. So we still have some stats only for the top domain, which is which was I mean, which is Jenkins.io. When we look at um, the stats for the plugin site, we don't have Google Analytics on the plugin site, but we still have. We could still look at Fastly, and what Fastly tell us is we also have quite a lot of traffic per day. So we have 17 gigabytes of by transfer every day on average since June, um, almost 700,000. Uh, request done on the plugin site, which is really impressive, especially for I mean, for that website that was uh, refactor a little bit more than a year ago, um, and it's really nice to see it um, even used today. Um, another uh, information that we can look is the Google Search Console for the plugin site, and specifically here is we can know how many times people are looking for information, let's say for the pipeline, Maven plugins, or the kids plugin, or the Docker plugin. So when we see at the number of clicks here, uh, we see that the top one is the plugin, so think is a slash kit plugin. Um, and yeah, we can, we, can, we, we can collect many information there. So yeah, so this was just a quick overview of um, the Jenkins um, project over the last, but over the last year. Um, which was, uh, I, I think, really nice and interesting to share. Any question? Thank you. So, um, would you would you be okay, or would you be willing to consider doing a blog post with this content, or would you like some ghostwriting help for a blog post? This this for me feels like really cool data that we should highlight. Yeah, sure. I can, I could write in a blog post. 
I mean, since we've got a recording of it, I can I can do writing writing help if you would like. That's just having you present the data has been great. Thank you. Um, oh yes, we can. Yeah, we can see how if I have the time to write a blog post or if you have. Um, let's see in the coming days how we can organize. I propose to continue now, and if you don't have any more question, um, so yeah, before we continue, if you are interested by specific stats or if you are interested by any information, um, feel free to ask, and I can see if I can collect that information. Um, I only spend the morning uh, to prepare and to gather those stats. Um, I mean, we have quite a lot of uh, services with many information, so and yeah, I think it's interesting to use them. Um, so I propose to continue. I just have that. I'm going to. So Tim, you mentioned homepage size and resource loading. Um, is that something that we could envision improving significantly without losing the content, or is that are those things critical that we actually have to load them? I had a, yeah, had a quick look. It seems like the YouTube player is the biggest resource. Ah. It's, it's, it's the jumbotron stuff basically, which makes it big. Well, well, or if it's the YouTube player, that may be the thing that I added with that Jenkins that below the fold. Uh, Jenkins video and so we might be able to dramatically but that was only added like in December so hmm okay uh, uh, that needs more more and more investigation okay can you can you see my screen again with the notes it's yes. very small and zoomed out sorry it's very it's very small zoomed out and not terribly readable yeah it's yeah it's yeah, much better I have I have a big screen and I have good eyes, so it's not a... <laughs> I have a big screen too, but yours seems long. Um, so we put a few things to the agenda today. So the first one that I want to 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 highlight is the GitHub organization for the Jenkins infra has been switched to the free tier. Um, so. This is something that we discussed several weeks ago. We were paying three hundred um, dollar per year, and now the free tier offer everything that was included in the previous um, plan. So that's one of the things. The second one is we had an LDAP incident over um, the Christmas period. Um, I, apparently, apparently the LDAP container was in a broken state, and Marky had to jump in and just restart the container. I look at um, that, we didn't lose any data and we still have backups, so everything is fine there. Um, considering the low traffic we had on the infrastructure during the period, the, the Christmas period, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, something that I have to investigate is um, why archive to Jenkins.io is terribly slow. So I noticed that from time to time, it's in the service is not available anymore. I suspect that we just have too many traffic on the machine, but uh, I haven't, yeah. So Olivier, when I look at my, okay, I'm doing a different status check, but it's been off socket timeout for, oh no, it's, it's relatively recent. Okay, it just, there was a period a week or two ago where it was offline and now it looks like it had been on online recently again and just offline. Okay, so so it does look like it's a performance thing. Previously, it was a simply offline. Could you help me understand who should we contact when it goes offline? I thought that was hosted by OSU. OS, no, uh, this, OS that that machine is hosted on Rackspace. Um, ah, okay. It's hosted on Rackspace. I had the issue. I mean, right before taking some vacation, and the machine was not reliable, so I could not SSH on it. Um, when I look at the RAC, RAC space console, um, nothing tell me that uh, the machine was overloaded, so um, I couldn't connect on it. And then suddenly, I was able to go to SSH on the machine. I looked at the logs, and I couldn't find anything. Um, it just like. The, the uptime was, I mean, the machine was running for a really long time. No, no, I mean, everything seems fine. Um, so I'm really suspecting like too much traffic from the mirror infrastructure. 
Um, but this is something that I have to investigate. We, we could investigate together, yeah. That, we that would pointing to it anymore. I thought we moved back to the Azure file storage for the full back. Me too. Um, me too. Um, it's just a guess here. Uh, normal, normally, we, we, we are using. And this is something that I also would like to work on um, in the coming weeks because the problem here is we use the fallback, um, but the fallback use the same Azure file storage than um, mirror bits, which means that if something goes wrong with mirror bits, the same issue happens with the fallback in the current state. So we should, I mean, I mean, we should use a different fallback machine. Okay. Now, is there content on archives.jenkins.io that isn't elsewhere? And if so, should we should we should I copy the content of it to a home server or to a, a, a place somewhere else? Uh, Glacier storage on Azure right? is or is archive.jenkins.io's content entirely saved somewhere else? Um, so it's safe elsewhere, but okay. um, I think it would still be nice to have another copy of archives at Jenkins that I use. It's on, it's on the Azure file storage and on package.jenkins.io, isn't it? Yeah, so one of the copies is on Azure file storage and also the other one is package.jenkins.io, exactly, Tim. Okay, so, so, and those are both full copies, not partial. I thought yeah. one of so, the copies No, 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 do, 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 those two are full copy. But okay. then the mirrors on the full copy, and then the politics, the policy, and the different mirrors depend on the on the mirror. Basically, some remove after a year of that time, other just keep. So it really depends on the mirrors. But the full copy of archive is right now is in two diff two different locations. So it's not okay. critical, but yeah, that would be nice to have okay. another backup. Um, another issue that I highlighted right before taking vacation, which was the server in mirror was um, not down, really slow, but because it was really slow, we saw a lot of timeout issues. Um, I was heavily affected by Serverion uh, around the 17th of December because, because the way the Jenkins, way we deploy Jenkins on our infrastructure. So the way we configure our ham shop is to install the plugin when the container starts. And so uh, I had, for one reason, I had to restart the container on um, release at Skydio Jenkins.io. And um, the container would not start because it couldn't install the plugins because it tried to download the plugins from Serverion, which was timeout, uh, time, timeout at that time. Um, so it took me a while to, to understand that. But basically what happened is some of the plugins were not installed. So the container was restarted. So we tried to reinstall every plugins and the loop was over and over and over and over. So it took me a while to, uh, to identify that. Um, so I think to avoid these kind of issues in the future is we should monitor every mirrors that we add to our infrastructure to be sure that if they are slower than let's say five seconds, uh, we are notified and we, we know we can take that into account. And also another thing uh, would be to package our own Docker image of Jenkins containing every plugins that we need. Because so we don't have to reinstall every plugin when we start a container. Um, yeah, this is something that we discussed with Damien and Garrett quite recently. Um, we may start working on that. Any questions? So I see still that Serverion is not mirroring for instance, the most recent release of the Git plugin, but they are mirroring the previous version. So, is the is there is Serverion included in the the mirror list right now or excluded? I assume it's included, but so somehow I not current. So I just so two things here. I re I re enabled um, it today, so it's not oh, included. Today. Okay. Yeah. So that was that was quite recent, but because of the because of the fact that we don't control mirrors. We don't know how often that machine is synchronized with our own mirrors. So that's why we cannot rely on that. I mean, that's how mirrors are working. Um, so as long as another mirrors has the, the data, that's fine. And and is there a contact list that we could have could have reached out to the Serverion administrators or or any other mirror administrator? I, so I didn't know how to do that. 
Yeah, so um, right now mirror bits is configured manually because we don't have many mirrors. So we run uh, like around 10 commands and those commands are documented on the mirror bits hand chart. So if you look okay. at the documentation, you see that we provide the mirror, the FTTP, F, F, um, sorry, earthing endpoint, HTTPS endpoint, and an email of contacts. Great, thank you. Yeah, and it does have a contact. Yeah. And it already happened in the past where the, the, the maintainer was not, um, we could not reach the maintainer, but then in that case, we just disabled the mirror the time, for the time being. Yeah. If you log into Meribits, you can also just run, I think, Meribits list or Meribits show, and it gives you all the information about the mirror, including the contact details. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Um, the next point is about the way we build the um, Docker images oh, sorry, on the Jenkins um, project. So in this case, I propose to, 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 to share the floor to Damien, if you want to present that. So just for information, you have seven minutes left. No problem. Um, so the, the whole context is uh, improving how we build uh, operational Docker images uh, in order to execute operation on the infrastructure. For instance, in the process of uh, working around Terraform, we want to also add some testing and linting. So we need a reproducible way or a reproducible environment to execute these steps. Uh, so the Docker image is a kind of de facto standard to be sure that you will have the same behavior either you are running on macOS, on a Kubernetes cluster, on a Linux machine, a Windows machine. So the idea is to build Docker image. Uh, the, there is already a lot of work around building Docker images using IMG uh, because the challenge here is uh, infra CI Jenkins IO is relying uh, on Kubernetes cluster to run the agent workloads. That means uh, running a Docker engine inside the Kubernetes pods would allow uh, some privileged use cases because the process that run inside the pod should be unprivileged as much as possible. Even though Docker uh, is able now to run as rootless it still requires some specific kernel capabilities as for today. So our challenge here is around security to avoid any malicious Docker file that, can, that could come from a malicious uh, source or any change to the Docker file. We would not want this to break out. For building Docker image, IMG or Kaniko are already solving that issue somehow, or at least provide a useful security and it's already how we do it. The challenge here is testing because we need to test such an image. For instance, for Terraform, we want a specific version of Terraform for our infrastructure, or it will break the future usages of Terraform. So the day you update the Terraform version, you need to update the tests. The goal is to write testing, at least uh, validating what is inside the Docker image, which is easy to run with some tools we are adding. Um, Finally, we have the reproducibility issue. Uh, I, I went in some issues where the Docker image produced by IMG or Kaniko were a bit different in terms of behavior than the one I was generating on my local Docker engine. So the question is, how a contributor could be able to run the same step as the build process without sacrificing the security? I mean, I don't want any uh, untrusted workload to run on the infra CI Jenkins. So the work we are doing uh, with Garrett and uh, Kara is starting to work with that as a part of the knowledge sharing. We try to make that work as much public as possible. The idea is to define first the make file that will say, okay, to build the image that's make build, make test and make deploy to hold all the logic that make file should be trusted as well as a Jenkins file. So it should end inside the shared library as a static resource. And the goal is to improve the pipeline library of Jenkins infra projects to provide a Docker build, Docker test, Docker publish and combination of both. So four function that provide these specific features relying on a make file, which is located near 
uh, this shared library. The target will be for a contributor if they want to build or test an image or contribute, they install make, they curl the make file, and then they can run the make build. But they cannot change the make file themselves unless they pull request the shell library to avoid having security issue and still provide a reproducible workload. So the status of this part is we had to bootstrap the process to be sure that we have a first image to build the image itself. Now that we have bootstrapped that part, we can start again the work on the infra 2849 by building a Docker Terraform image that we will have to test as well. So this is the current status of that work. Don't know if it raised questions. Uh, to me, it totally makes sense. I mean, if yeah. there are something unclear, don't say date. No, no, that's fine. Uh... Thank you, Damien, for that. That's all for me. Thanks. There is one last item that I realized that uh, I forgot to talk, which is automated release. So before, so around mid of December, I started working to have, um, to build release candidates on the Jenkins um, infrastructure. I created an etiquette infra 2853. So um, if you want to participate in the discussion, um, it's there. Um, Tim and Jesse already provided some feedback. I have to answer there. But yeah, if you're interested to understand what's the current state, uh, feel free to look. Mark, are you the one who highlighted CI the Jenkins at you? Uh, I, uh, sorry? Go ahead, Tim. That's me just getting annoyed. Is this the single most annoying thing I have with the Jenkins infrastructure right now is um, the CI Jenkins agents dying randomly. And it'd be great to spend some time investigating that. Um, I, did a, I did try, but I just don't really have access because um, it's on the AWS agents and I can't see anything there. I tried yeah. to get into them, but I couldn't find the credentials properly. And, um, Yep, I can I can take some time to look at it for during during the week. I mean, I have nothing to add here because I haven't looked at Seattle Jenkins IO for a while. Yeah, it'd be good if we could detect it and so that we can monitor it and so that we can see it go up or down. Um, the, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I think I think detection might be feasible just by looking for file pattern for certain patterns in the build logs, but correction, I, I don't know what to do about correction, Tim. I could envision, oh. right. I just meant so that we could at least measure how much it's happening and then we know when we've solved the problem. Ah, okay. So that we're currently relying on people complaining about that. Yep. Right. Yeah, right. I think people have just gone quiet and they just keep rerunning the builds. Um, but I certainly had it a number of times over the holidays. Well, and, and Olivier, it's an interesting one. Certainly our costs are increased as a result of running builds a second time because the agent was disconnected on the first time. And so there's there's an element of this where it's actually would be a cost savings. I just, I can't predict how much of a cost saving. So yes, it's an issue. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't think I'm gonna have time to investigate in any any recent, any any upcoming time real soon, Tim? I apologize. I could I could I could I could look at it. Um, regarding the cost here, uh, I, I had so basically I completed my document with the various costs. And the thing is, because we had so low traffic uh, in December, I mean, the cost was the cost decreased anyway during December, so I could not detect that. Okay. Well, well, and I don't know that the reliability hit here is going to to show up as a measurable cost savings. It's just it, it, we absolutely are causing users to rerun their builds because the previous one failed. Yeah, I totally agree. And I had to, re to restart a bunch of jobs this way several yeah. weeks ago. So yeah, okay, I could look at it. Um, we are two minutes over the, minute, the limit of the meeting. So I propose to stop here, unless you have one last element that you want to bring um, for the next meeting. So again, feel free to to add your comments for the future for the next meeting in one week, um, add any topic that you want to discuss. And meanwhile, um, we all 
we are all be in RSC anyway. So see you there. Bye bye.